we have Ryan Atwood today to talk to us about pomegranates. Welcome, Ryan. Thanks for having me. I didn't know that we could grow pomegranates here. Yeah, we've had pomegranates in Florida for hundreds of years. Um, we don't have a commercial uh, fruit crop system here, but we do grow in the dooryard. And do they produce fruit that are, you know, big enough to eat, or are they difficult to grow? They're not difficult to grow. They do produce fruit that's edible, um, although there are some pest problems associated with pomegranates, so uh, the fruit's not very pretty. They're not native to here, though, are they? No, they're not native to here. Uh, they originate, actually, somewhere, they think Iran, and p possibly the Himalayas, and then were transported all over the world. Uh, pomegranates are mentioned, actually, in the Bible, even. It, well, in Greek mythology, as well. Um, but you say they grow here. How big do they get? Do they, are they shrubs or trees? Or? Oh, the, the trees themselves? Yeah, they, they are um, 15 to 20 feet. They tend to be shrubby, although you can prune them into more of a tree-like structure. But they're natural, they naturally want to be more shrub-like. Think, think citrus tree. You have some here to show us? What I do. You, do These are little uh, one-gallon trees that I brought. And this kind of shows you what... But if left to their own devices, what they kind of want to do, they kind of want to bend over and have these multiple leaning branches and become kind of shrub-like. Kind of a weepy shrub, kind almost of a, like a plumbago. Right, yeah, a <laughs> weepy shrub. But my other example here that I brought for you guys, you can see where we're starting to train this into more of a tree. So we've got it staked, and we've done some pruning, and we've got the central leader going up towards the top. So if we continue to... Uh, prune it and keep and take care of it, we can actually turn it into a tree instead of a shrub. Keep all the branches off on the bottom and just make it branch at the top? Right, yeah, you'd have uh -huh. to prune off the branches at the bottom and just keep training it upward towards the sky. And it, the tallest it's going to get is about 20 feet. Oh, wow, that's pretty big. Now, how old were those plants? I mean, how old do they have to be before they start to produce fruit? Well, typically they'll produce fruit uh, around age two or three, but for the first three or four years when they produce fruit, it tends, has a tendency to fall onto the ground. So young trees will have fruit that falls on the ground sometimes, but that's just a it natural thing. Falls off before it's ripe? It, I mean. it, it, yeah, well, it, some right. of it will stay on and ripen, and other, other fruit will fall off. So. How do you tell when it's ripe and on, on a normal tree? Then? <laughs> well, they say that if you bang on it, it, it makes a metallic n type noise. On the fruit? On the fruit. <laughs> I've never tried it. But they usually would stay on the tree, and you just have to tap them and see when they sound right? Yeah, uh, you're going to harvest the fruit sometime between July and November. It's going to depend on, depend on the variety or the cultivar that you're planting. But usually you'll see color break and, you know, just the old-fashioned method of try one out. <laughs> well, what varieties do you recommend? Uh, Wonderful is a variety that's um, actually the most important in California. It's their number one commercial variety, and that's what most of the pomegranate juice is made out of. That actually originated from Florida, and they got it um, in 1898 and they took it to California. Wow. So it's an old proven variety. It tends to grow in a number of different types of soil and in different environments. That's probably one I'd be looking for. Are there, so you're not sure about the new improved varieties? Uh, currently, University of Florida has a little uh, program that's looking at different varieties for Florida for, for commercial grow, growing, and it's just in the beginning stages. Um, they don't really have a good feel yet on how that'll turn out. So what kind of a site should we use to plant them in? Well, you want to make sure that it's well-drained, although they will tolerate a number of different soil types. Uh, typically, you'll see where they'll have a, a, a loamy, kind of rich soil. Is that what they like the most? But they, they'll grow well in the sand, which is mostly what we have here in our area. Do you have to fertilize them any differently or water them differently if they're in a sandy soil? Well, you may want to water them a little more frequently. And their watering requirements are much like citrus, typically about 58 to 60 inches per year, about an inch of rain per week on average. So during the summertime, you want to make sure they're at least getting about an inch of rain, and then in the wintertime, at least an inch every two weeks. And is there a special fertilizer we should be using? Uh, University of Florida is just recommending an 888 right now. It's pretty basic, or 101010, something pretty basic that you could find at any of your local nursery or box stores. Okay. Well, um, what other kind of tips do you have about growing them? Well, some of the problems that pomegranates get are fungal in nature because of our warm, humid climates. Uh, historically, pomegranates would have been found in Mediterranean-type climates, which are uh, drier when the fruit particularly is ripening. So what you'll find on pomegranates here are a lot of fungal problems. So you're probably going to want to incorporate a couple of copper sprays during the summer in order to try to, to 
maintain the integrity of the fruit, the, not only just the visual appearance, but it can get some soft rot and brown rots in it. Um, mites can be an issue as well, so that might be something that you need to keep your eye on. Okay, and I see the one you showed here, we think may have a few chili thrips on it too. Yeah, chili thrips could be an issue, it looks like. You know, we're, we're still learning a lot about pomegranates, even though they've been in Florida for a long time. Um, they haven't really caught on. It's just recently with the new health craze, you know, they're so heart healthy and the antioxidant levels are so good for you that uh, people are really starting to become more and more interested in pomegranates. Now, how are they eaten? The ones I've seen in the stores, I've seen them sold in the stores, but I'm not sure quite how you eat them. <laughs> yeah, they're my, very seedy. <laughs> they're very seedy. You, you cut them in half, basically, and you scoop out the in, insides of the pomegranate. And, of course, most people are after juice for pomegranate, and that's what I think you, primarily what people use them for or think about pomegranates these days, at least. Typically, it's, they're, they're used as, um, as juice. They're, typically, they're, they're used as juice. Well, can they take shade or something like that? Or do they need to really be out in the sun? Well, because the, people are going to be planting them probably as an edible landscape item. Right, right. They're just going to be best in the open sun. Um, I don't think you're going to want it to be too shaded. So I'd be looking for a sunny spot. Um, it, they can tolerate cold temperatures. Uh, they can get down to zero degrees. The issue with pomegranates are going to be that they're flowering in early March. So that uh, their flowers are going to be susceptible to any temperatures of 28 degrees or less. So if they have flowers on the, on the plant themselves, you're going to want to try to protect those if the temperatures are predicted to be less than 28 degrees. Now they do make a nice uh, ornamental in the sense of the flowers are very showy. They're orange, reddish, and they can be quite brilliant. And then the fruit itself, when it forms, has got a very uh, uh, vivid color to it. So it, it's, it's a nice decoration for your yard as well as something to eat. These shrubs look a little bit um, leggy. Do you need to prune them a lot, though, if you're going to keep them as, as a, an ornamental shrub? Yeah, I have a couple slides, um, and in them you can see where uh, the pomegranates grow naturally. They'll tend to sucker from the bottom of the ground, and you'll get multiple stems. So if you, don't, if you want to keep a central leader and kind of train the pomegranate tree itself, that would be wise. Otherwise, it'll, it'll form multiple stems, it'll be bushy, and um, will be really, really thick and dense. So some people like them for like privacy hedges or uh, that type of thing. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. They, they, they do look a little different than, the, than they do right here now, then. I mean, you, I've talked to many people who've, who've got grandparents that have them in their dooryard, and they all seem to produce fruit. It's just a matter of what kind of quality is the fruit. Okay. Well, great. Thank you.